Last time we looked at the finding the center end of an area. We talked about balancing your pencil on your finger so that you have the same amount of moment over here from the weight as a moment over there from the weight. We talked about equivalent systems and we've sort of derived this basic formula. That is where the center of the area is. I'm going to actually calculate it this time using that definition, the actual integral itself. Specifically, all I want to do is find out what dA is and evaluate that integral. Here's my dA. This is like a Riemann sum kind of thing. I'm going to take a stripe of it. If you think about having some sort of um, chisel tip marker or a highlighter, this is like actually coloring in this area if you made little stripes as you went along. That would give you the total area as you added up all those stripes. This, this is not, I mean we do this in calculus, but I, I'm talking about something much more basic here. A rectangle has its area as base and sight. That's all. So this base is vanishingly thin. That gives me a base of B, dx. And the height is going to be, again, we're going back to, this is the definition of my line here. So that height, as I go along, is y. So that height is going to be 1 thirds x plus 5. This integral will allow me to find x bar. That's the coordinate for where this centroid of this area is. That's as if I took this green area right here and I made it a steel plate and I wanted to find out where the center of gravity was. Where would I put it? Now if this is 9 inches, it's going to be something to the right of 4 and a half because of the slope up. So what do we get from the integral? If I take x times dA, there's my dA, plug it in. My limits of integration here are 0 to 9. That's what x is doing. And my limits of integration need to match what my integration is taking with respect to. So that's the top. The bottom is the same, except it doesn't have that x in there. And I can evaluate it. I get 4.85. And a little bit more than one, four and a half over. So that's exactly what I would expect. To find a y bar, many times, well, you're going to use the same integral. But many times what I want to use instead of a vertical stripe is a horizontal one. Think with my chisel tip marker, I can color this way or I can color that way, it doesn't make any difference. So if I look at this function, this is minus 2x plus 18, that gives me this line. This point, or any point along here, is still xy. So I can still say that dA is base times height. Now I have a bigger base and a smaller height. So my height base is to go from here to the point on the line would be x. So if my base is x, I'm integrating dy, I re really wish that this were in terms of y. So I can solve this equation for x, substitute that in there. If you look at this equation, this gives you x equals 9 minus 1 half y. That is the area of this horizontal rectangle. And that goes into this equation just like before. Your limits of integration have to match what you're differentiating with respect to. So if I'm going to differentiate with respect to y, these are 0 now to 7. <coughs> if I want to look at actually my very first example that I had a minute ago, where I had y equals a third of x plus 5. Now I could, in fact, go ahead and solve, just like I just did, x equals 3x minus 15. The problem with that is if I'm taking a horizontal rectangle right here, my horizontal rectangle would be 9 base, but by the time I get up to this point, my horizontal rectangle isn't the same. Now, you have two choices. You can do two integrals. This one will go from 0 to 5, and then from 5 up to 8, with two different da's, and add them up. That's fine. That works. Or, you're going to have to do something different. And sometimes you really want to do something different, because if you end up with something like x squared plus 2x, you do not want to solve and then integrate. And they get worse. So we want to know what I can do to use the simple vertical rectangle I had before. The problem, the only thing you need to be careful with is that what does this y really mean here? What I'm actually doing is the same thing I did when I balanced my pencil. I'm taking a sort of a weighted average of the centroid of each of my little bits. So when we started we did it with discrete masses, now we're doing it with tiny masses, but it's still sort of an average of where the individual weight is acting. So what I'm kind of averaging out here are the centroids of each of my stripes if that doesn't make sense, work with me for a minute here and say that that blue y is actually the coordinate for the centroid of that differential area. So where's the middle of my rectangle? If I have a vertical rectangle, the centroid of the rectangle is going to be in the middle. So the middle of this would be halfway up. 
So when I actually use a vertical rectangle to find a y bar, what I need to do is integrate right here. This y, that blue y, needs to be the coordinate for the middle of this. The coordinate of that will not be all the way up at y, it will be halfway up at y. So when you plug that in. Now, why did I not have to do it before? If you look at what happens on this one, this blue y that I had right here is the coordinate for the centroid of this differential area. Well, the y coordinate for that box is the same thing as this y. So it didn't make any difference. And if I look at the original one, the x coordinate right here for the middle of this box is just the same as that x. So the blue x here is the same as this black x. The blue y here is the same as this black y. But when I start talking about a vertical rectangle, a vertical DA, to find y bar, it is no longer the same. These two things aren't the same anymore. So that's when you have to be a little bit careful when you're going to use a different stripe than you would start with. It's often, however, just much easier. So here are my two integrals. The big thing is dA is just the area of the differential stripe. You can do it horizontally, you can do it vertically, and in fact you can do it using polars or a lot of other things as you'll see. Whatever your differential area is, dA is the area of that differential area. Your limits of integration have to match whatever you're going to differentiate with respect to. And when you actually plug in these integrals, these need to be the coordinates of the center of the differential area.